which is also there for that. She is also the author of numerous scientific articles and publications such as Environmental Health Perspectives and Environmental Science and Technology, Laurel Juana. I need to change that mile. <laughs> I am a scientist, and this book has absolutely nothing to do with science, thank goodness. It was a blast to write. Um, I was inspired and moved by the recent Great Recession. It brought back a lot of resonance on you know, my grandparents and the Great Depression, and it impacted so many different people, youngsters just getting started on their careers or not middle-aged people and uh, elders again in the retirement. And so I, I wrote a book um, that, that follows two people, uh, one um, that was born in the, the turn of the last century and, and his life through the Great Depression, and then someone who just went through this recent thing. So I'd like to read small sections from this. Um, the book is called Reflections on the Journey. and. Uh, in the early part of the 20th century, an ambitious young man named John McQuaid sets out on a journey away from his ancestral home in Kansas towards the forested mountains of Oregon. Leaving his family's troubles behind, he rises into a place of power and respect as a home builder in the booming city of Portland. But as the Great Depression tightens its grip, John becomes resigned to watching his family slip into despair as his ability to revive them collapses along the economy. Decades later, a deep recession descends across the country. Bonnie Todd begins to wonder whether she, too, will wind up living in squalor like her grandparents did after the depression ended their dreams. Following the breakup of her marriage and receipt of yet another pink slip, Bonnie finds that she must reinvent her life and discover meaning in a new world. about John McQuaid in 1912. John stopped his horse by the rushing stream and smiled. He was on his way down the Columbia River Gorge to pick up his younger brother at the rail station in Portland. He hadn't seen Patrick since he had left Kansas so many years earlier when the boy had only been eight, um, almost the age John had been when the world had been turned upside down. He had a hard time leaving Patrick and his sister Jessie behind but taking them with him to Oregon had not been possible as he himself had only been 16 when he headed out. John knew they still needed their mom and he would not have been able to take care of them and provide for them. Then he had worried about the influence of his grandfather, particularly on Patrick. His heart gladdened at the thought that his brother was on his way, escaping his grandfather's rule at about the same age that John had. Uh, he had no idea what to expect when Patrick arrived. He had been thrilled when his brother's letter arrived last month and was really looking forward to seeing him, but could still only think of him as a young boy. As a stream flowed past in front of him, John wandered, wondered on the conflict with his grandfather and their falling out. He drew the forest air deep into his lungs and felt relief wash over him that he refused to knuckle under to his grandfather's demands that he prepare himself to take over the farm's management someday. Taking the last glance at the majestic forest surrounding him, John stirred his horse from the mare he bought for his brother and took out, eager to reach town and meet the young man that his brother was becoming. As the journey brought him further and further into the civilized world, his longing to return to the mountains and trees rose like a hunger. The rail station appeared in front of John as he entered the heart of Portland. Squinting up at the sky to figure the time, he saw that he made it to the station by noon. His brother's train was expected early this afternoon, and John wanted to be here in plenty of time to greet him. How in hell am I going to know it's him, he muttered to himself. John tethered the horses outside the general store across from the rail station and wandered in to stock up on goods that were scarce at the logging camp, as well as food for himself and his brother. He figured Patrick would arrive mighty hungry, just like he himself had when he'd landed in Oregon years before. The man behind the counter greeted John. Young man, what can I do for you? Sir, I'm picking up some things for me and my fellows at the logging camp. Yeah, figured you got that weather to look. Figured you were down from one of the camps. I'm also here to meet the train. Brother's coming in from Kansas. The 
Pryor's eyebrows were raised in surprise. All the way from Kansas? That were that where you from too? John nodded somberly. Yep, never going back though. Oregon gotcha, does it? The man laughed. Why is that look of young men needing to spend their days away from the constraints of society? Guess so. And I have brothers here. You know anybody family in Kansas? John wasn't sure how to take this man's words. Some folks in Oregon weren't happy, but so many people were heading west. The open space that people like John craved soon became crowded and civilized like the places they'd escaped. He answered testily, no sir, just my brother. The proprietor seemed to note the, the defensive tone of John's response. Now don't worry, son, just asking. What can I get for you? After selecting from the list he brought, John paid and then packed his purchases into his pack, thanking the proprietor before heading out the door into the sunny day. He untied the horses and walked them over to a shady spot next to the rail station to sit and wait for his brother to arrive. He watched people passing around and glancing shyly as one young woman walked past with an old woman, perhaps her mother. As the sun began to tilt towards the western horizon, he was interrupted from his reverie by the rumble of the train. His heart beat fast with the sound. Although he had grown close to many of the men up at the camp, having his own flesh and blood here lightened his heart. He wished that Jesse could come too, but the logging camp was no place for a young woman. Someday he would find a way to get her out of Kansas too. As the train whistled to a stop, John kept his hand on the horse's flanks to keep them calm amidst the noise of the engine and the squeezing brakes. Searching faces on the many people stepping off the train, packages and suitcases dangling from their hands, John's impatient wrote, impatience rose. And then his breath caught at the sight of a young man with black hair stepping down from the train onto the platform, glancing around and shielding his eyes from the sun's glare. It was as if John was staring into a much younger version of his father. So now he visit on him. Can't see that this. <laughs> this is the modern time. Um, her heart caught in her throat and tears began streaming down her face. She'd finally gotten an interview and it hadn't gone well. This wasn't how she'd planned her life to turn out. No husband, no job, few friends, and living in a crappy little apartment that the sun barely touched. She had envisioned a long career followed by a big retirement party, traveling with Phil, and her kids bringing their children to the house for visits with their grandparents. Everything that she had worked for had evaporated in a period of a couple of years, and she no longer knew what she was supposed to be. The grouchy lady who hid her little apartment? Should she start collecting cats or surprise everyone and rob a bank like she jokingly told her daughter she was planning to do? Then she could spend the rest of her life behind bars. Would that be any less sorted than where she appeared to be heading? She glanced around at the intersection she was driving through and felt panic rising in her chest. Oh, good Lord, where am I? How is this possible? She'd been born and raised in the Portland area. She had just barely ventured west on the, on the 26th for the interview. All right, I have to be near Beaverton, or do they turn west and head into Hillsboro? Janet. She pulled into a gas station for asked her, her directions back to the highway. The young man in the convenience store serving the station greeted her cheerily. Hi. Wow, your hair is so amazing. Oh my God, she said. I must look like Medusa in all this wind. No way, it's really amazing, like a silver wave on the ocean floor. Either you are way too kind, or you are a poet and a surfer. She laughed. <laughs> His dreadlocks and bohemian appearance calmed her. I am a happily employed poet slash liberal arts major slash gas station attendant whose parents are dismayed beyond belief. Bonnie laughed with the first genuine joy she had felt all day, but not in years for that matter. While I am an unemployed scientist slash mother slash apartment dweller thinking about winding up owning a hundred cats because I'm not sure anybody will hire me for anything else. Cool, he said. He reached his hand across the counter to introduce himself. I'm Matt, it's great to meet you. Well, Matt, I'm Bonnie, and I'm also very pleased to meet you because I just left an interview that I'm pretty sure I can't, and I have absolutely no idea where I am or how to get out of here. Um, not that this is such a bad place, but I should really get back to the tiny dark apartment and start searching for some cats to join me. He busted up laughing. I'm almost afraid to give you directions, Bonnie. Maybe it'd be better if you hung out with my friends and me. We're also musicians, in addition to being liberal arts majors. And we're playing this evening at a cafe just down the landing or two. Wow. I think I'd better join you because it might be a bad thing if I go home right now. Why don't you head over to the cafe now? I'll give you directions and then we can both agree when you're safe from stopping by uh, your, to start your cat collection, I'll give you directions for the rest of the way. He drew a detailed map on the back of the disturbed 
Lord to start a receipt and send her on her way. This time she didn't have to fake the joy in her face. Maybe she would wind up poor and destitute, but tonight she was going to listen to the sound dance music, and she thought that nothing could be better than that. <laughs> 